So what we're doing tonight is basically adopting uh, their budget, but decreasing the amount if we do want to uh, have the uh, marketing position on the city side. But if not, we'll leave their budget at the 219 number that they submitted. <laughs> Submitted a budget of $219,000. So there's two items. One is they wanted to add the marketing position, but they'll keep their budget at $265,000. If we take the marketing position on our side, uh, it'll still be at that number, but it's just that we're going to from our perspective. I'm sorry, say something. I'm sorry, say that second part again. It's 219. The budget is 219. Right. Okay. okay. The only thing that we're talking about tonight is whether or not we're going to manage the marketing position that they submitted, or are they going to manage it? I thought the 55 was included. The 55 is part of 219. I might have misspoken. Yeah. I thought that um, the mayor talked about, or somebody talked about the resources and the market person would need. So yes, yeah, so it would need to be more than 55, but okay. the number that they submitted, am I right? Uh, yeah, it was 55000 for the position. Mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. But there may be more that, I mean, we'll have to put, we'll have to put more in there for the position, but the position is 55000 which they put in there. Mm -hmm. So when we decide, when, we, when we're making the decision, uh, we aren't making a decision on the monetary amount, we're just making a decision on the position? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Yes, and then for the 55000 whatever else is needed, we can discuss the extras that we can put in there, but okay. it's approving it. Okay. Okay. If, we, if, uh, yeah, if we approve it with the chamber retaining it or getting it, then there's no additional resource need to be added to it. From my from my understanding, based upon what the chamber submitted. It's but if, what you're saying, it sounds like if the, the city assumes that position, then additional resources have to come to some place. Oh yeah, because we didn't we didn't we didn't budget. For it. Well, you were in the original discussion. Now, the, my, my memory was that the 55 was baked into the 219. I can confirm that. Mm -hmm. But the uh, the issue there was if you took the marketing position and that $55,000 to cover it, you also took the remaining $164,000 to cover the activities of that position and uh, the promotion of convention and visitors. Is that correct or incorrect? You know what, I, what I'm what I'm saying, uh, and I'll just say this for clarification: is that that if we opt to have this marketing person as a part of the city, we have also we are also opting into taking all the associated money, and we're going to run the whole show. But I, I see it differently, at least initially. Um, and my take on it is the fifty-five thousand, and I guess I need to go through. What I uh, looked at as I approach this, I uh, prepare for this discussion. In 2011, there was a total of 21,000, and correct me if I'm wrong, approximately unused hot funds in the, C the CDB budget, um, which the council authorized uh, the chamber, doing business as the CDB, to reallocate in 2012. And in 2012, there was a total of 62.4 in unused funds. So as I looked at this, in my humble opinion, um, as we reevaluate the efficient and effective use and uh, well, effective, efficient and effective placement and management of the city CBD, I looked at the 55 and the 62.4. Because I think the chamber, is, and I may be out there by myself on this, and because I think the chamber still has, or, or should have, some functions, uh, whether it's a CDB or not, but, but funds could be used from the hot fund for them to perform certain um, duties and responsibilities as it relates to tourism. So, 
My thought was the amount of the requested amount was two nineteen five oh five. If we transferred the two six excuse me, the sixty two four of unused funds from the twenty twelve budget and we deduct that sixty two four from the two nineteen five oh five and deduct the fifty five, it would leave if my math is correct. 157.105 for the chamber to perform some of the duties that, uh, that we're going to need because in transition there are certain things that just need to be done and I, I just think it would only be fair to at least leave those funds there for the chamber to operate some of the tourism responsibilities. Two things. I don't uh, I don't quibble with that. You're, you're, what you're saying is that of the non uh, personnel type funds, the operating funds, right. we come up with some equitable split, leaving the chamber with some of those funds to carry out part of their mission. And the new person, should we choose to take him into the city, part of those funds. Um, I don't quibble with that. I mean, that's that's a fair and reasonable. Now, the the number you're using is 62.5? 62.4. I took that from uh, one of the documents. Yeah. Well, the number that um, there was a projection, year in, a fiscal year end projection that we received, um, when was it, last Tuesday? And it had a number in there of something like 64, 633 as surplus. But there's some errors in that calculation, and they might have, by their number, by the chamber's number, submitted 44,000. Fifty-seven dollars, or something like that. So, if you will, uh, you know, if you'll if you'll look at the bottom line numbers and just do the math across there, you'll see that it's not it's not going to come up to their number. We have we do a doctor that does say sixty-two four, and yep. it, and it says net balance available, and I'm only talking about yep. tourism money. Tourism through September 30, 2012, was 62.4. Now, the, but the 62.4 <clears throat> was not included in the 219. Yeah. But you subtracted it from it. I wanted to subtract it because I'm proposing the transfer of the unused funds from this fiscal year. So in other words, so, so you know, okay. reauthorization. Okay, I understand now. So you're, you're, you're in favor of reallocation of funds. For tourism purposes. Oh, you're so, you're leaving the difference between their unspent budget and the monies they have received in their accounts yes, to, to do uh, tourism things. Yes, sir. And that's the new a, monies a and new monies in 2013 going uh, go with the position, and that could either be with the chamber or with the city. Is that basically it? Yeah. Well. Actually, it was the 55 and the 64. Yeah. You know, adding those. Okay, you took the 55 plus. I mean, subtracting. Okay, yeah, 55 and then the 64. Or 62 4. 62 4. And that's what you were saying would actually stay under the auspices of the, of the city. Let me clarify. Yes. What I did in looking at this, if we. Um, Authorize the chamber to reallocate, using the term, the 62.4 yes. that was left in the budget from yes. 2012. Yes. I am suggesting that we authorize them to reallocate it to remain in their budget for tourism purposes. Mm -hmm. Remain in their budget, which means that from the 219 they're requesting this time, the, the 219.505, I would subtract that 62.4 from the 219.505 and the 55,000 for the position. 62.4 and 55. Mm -hmm. You would subtract that from 219, and the difference would leave it there for them to carry out tourism responsibilities until this council has and staff have an opportunity to work out further details on what we're going to do. I, I think you're confused a little bit. Yeah, I am. But she's, she's not subtracting the 62.4 and the 55,000 and the 219. What she's doing is she's taking 219 plus 62.4, getting a total number. Okay. And then. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're. Maybe I'm trying to get this. Okay. 
<coughs> Just do it one more time. 62.4 is the starting point. I'm subtracting yes. it because they're going to have the 62.4 that we're authorizing them to use from last from this year's budget. I think we, so do, you I think we do it end together. You use the 64.4 to start up capital. Uh huh. To start up capital for the tourism bureau. And then the park putting it in and take that to the sample, putting it in and taking it right yes, back out. Yes. Because it, it's in the 219. Mm -hmm. So if we're putting it in from what's left over this year, I want to take it out of 2013, mm -hmm. and I also want to take out the 55. Because they'll be carrying it over. There will be no need to allocate that amount. Let me just okay. let me just uh, state very clearly mm -hmm. what we have on the agenda mm -hmm. is that we will decide uh, the budget by the DeSoto Chamber of Commerce working as our convention and business bureau. So really, essentially, we're just deciding whether or not the Chamber of Commerce will continue to be our visitors and tourism. Uh, so that's our decision to not on the agenda. I, I, I couldn't reach a decision without doing some calculations in and, my mind. And I, I certainly understand that. Yeah. Okay. But I guess uh, we need to also get to the basis of what is the will of this council. Uh, do you want to uh, take that, the uh, visitors' bureau in house uh, and have the city? manage that, or is your desire to have the chamber uh, continue to manage the visitors' uh, convention your funds? Okay. Will they continue to serve in that capacity? That's we need to have a discussion. That's exactly right. right. Okay, and so just so I can clarify where we are in this meeting, after we have that discussion, are we going to get into the figures, or that's for another meeting? That That is for the following meeting. Okay, yeah. thank you. So right. the, the, the reallocation of 624 is not an item on this discussion. You right. understand? Right. That is correct. Okay. okay. So the discussion. Nor, but nor is 55,000 for the person or anything. I mean, that's it material is, information it for is. us, yes. Uh, but like it's not. Year 13. So, so that it's not. Yeah. I think, I think really we really have, so. have to. We have a couple of issues here. Is the way Tehran presented it was the issue was the 55,000 for the tourists tourism director, but now this matter, the way you're presenting it, it's all or nothing. That's a, that's a, um, everything goes to the city or everything stays with the chamber. Well, that's and, what and, this council uh, and decided the, we wanted council to discuss. McCowan has suggested that we might want to consider a third option, and that's a, that's a splitting of it. That At might, least in transition, because it takes time in my view to work out the details. And I, I think what uh, Councilwoman McCowan has clearly stated is that she is for the transitioning of the convention and visitors uh, bureau under the city umbrella, <coughs> but to do it in a phase or a phase out program as opposed to uh, enacting this for the 2013 budget. That's a hard one discussion. Do we have two options? We well, that, she had just presented yes. that, and certainly uh, it merits our, our consideration. Now, uh, I'll, I'll tell you that you know I have the same concerns that I expressed uh, at our initial meeting when we discussed this. Uh, sometimes I think that cities can uh, get a little too. <coughs> uh, it, it could be perceived as a power grab. You know, you're. I mean, uh, the Chamber of Commerce has served us in this capacity uh, for years, so why do we need to do it? And I see some, uh, I see some value in uh, the Chamber serving in that capacity. I also see the City Council being inundated uh, with requests from citizens and from businesses telling us that we need to uh, market here, or we need to change our strategy and market here. And you've got seven individuals here that are listening to two that are listening to different groups about what we do well and what we don't do well. And unfortunately, the tendency sometimes is to listen to those folks who are speaking the loudest, and maybe they have your ear, you know, because these are folks that we know in our community. It's not like Congress. We go to store with these folks. We go to church with these people. 
and we have a relationship with them. And uh, they will tell us, I want you to promote the corner theater, I want you to promote baseball, or whatever it is. Having that, uh, that chamber arm, I think, certainly gives the citizens uh, a fair opportunity to participate, having individuals that are in business in our community that serve on a board of directors. Uh, you know, to me, that's, that's the best way to do it, uh, is to open it up for those business people and those civic individuals, those church leaders that are serving on our chamber board, uh, and they decide who it is collectively that best represents the city of Dallas, uh, in, as it relates to conviction and business tourism. So that, you know, I still have that same concern that I expressed earlier. Sometimes governments can have a knee-jerk reaction to, you know, uh, a, a stated problem, and we overextend. And and I just think that uh, you know we can make some adjustments, but I'm just not in favor of taking it in house personally. Mr. Mayor, let's pose a different question. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm again make a suggestion. Basically, the fifty-five thousand is kind of up to arms regarding the position because we don't really know what we want to do with, um, with the city or with the chamber. Mm -hmm. And I suggest we just deal with the 55000 and take that out of their budget. And then we can always come back later on and <coughs> amend the budget in the year when we come to a conclusion about how we want, where we want the position. Because it's kind of hard right now to take more than the 55 out of the 2013 budget, because all we hear tonight is to deal with the 2013 budget. And again, it's my understanding at our last meeting, we approved that amount and stated that we wanted to review that marketing position. And so that's what we're doing today, is just reviewing mm -hmm. who do you yes. want to manage it? Do you want the chamber to manage it, or do you want the city to manage it? Well, but in order to answer that question, part of what we discussed was that it wasn't just a person, that there were uh, monies in this 2013 budget that supported the salary. So it couldn't be just 55000 So to come back now and say, okay, now it's just 55000 that we're talking about is not where we left off. No, it's not. That's not to say that it's just the fifty-five thousand. It's just to say that right now, if you take the fifty-five thousand out, then there won't be a marketing position anywhere at this point until we can, you can come back later and decide how much more of that you want to take out, or you want to put it back in and put other stuff with it. You I see what I'm saying. I'm just that at this point, the only thing that's kind of Definite is that the fifty-five thousand for the market position. I guess either I'm, that or you leave it. I'm, I'm frustrated that we can't just talk about it and make a decision. Um, we can't keep meeting about the same thing. This is meeting number two about the very same thing. Um, so what you're suggesting is that we have another meeting at a later date about the very thing. And I just I'm, 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 I'm frustrated by that. Why don't we make this that's the council. That's the council. Y'all got to decide what, what do y'all want to do. Do y'all want to manage we, it? We'd or? like to. Okay. But right. we can't do it and under we, those restrictions. And we understand that. But what we're saying is it might be 55000 but there may be more that you want to put back in there and put a position. Absolutely. In. We don't know that number yet because we don't know what else that you want to have done. All we're saying is going to put that 55000 number that was put in there. Well, why can't we decide what we want to have? Why don't you just make this thing easy and say, let's talk about the the entire amount where this function goes and not try to split hairs over who gets what part of it. If we want to put this thing under the city, then they get the whole, the city gets the whole budget and we'll charge the city manager with working out a, an orderly transition with the Chamber of Commerce. You know, whatever, whatever he works out with them. Or if we want to give it to the Chamber of Commerce and let them run it, then uh, the city is, is out of it, and they have a budget that they've submitted. Right. And, uh, you know, if we can accept that, or we can argue about it line out of the line. But right now, it is, do we want this function under the city, or do we want this function under the chamber? And either way, it gives you a way out. You know, because if we put it under the city, the city manager is going to have to work out how he wants that money uh, used. You know, he's going to have to work out a budget for that particular function within the city. 
And he's not going to do it here at the table tonight. I just got one, one more question. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know from the chamber, although it's $55,000, what else, how much more money would that position be using out of the budget <coughs> other than that $55,000? Well, uh, and, and that, that's what I would like to figure out because that will yeah. close the gap on this discussion that we're having now about how much is it going to be totally. I'm going to have the president and, and, and the chairman address any issues, but I want to make sure that we discuss this to the point where we're comfortable with the president of the chamber to come forward and that's what that There's really two different things. Now, Sandy's saying one thing and the same saying another. I'm getting, with, I'm getting with saying, I, I understand what Sandy's saying. What I'm saying is that I want to know from the chamber what else in their budget that they were going to use on top of that $55,000 for this position. I, I don't understand what yeah. you're saying, but so that is their little, budget that, yeah. keeps, that is beyond the CMB budget. Yeah. yeah. So other funds that they might have within their own operating budget. Yeah. And then we'll be able to say, look, if it's 55 plus another 10,000, then yeah, it's 65,000. Yeah. Okay, that's, well, that's very good. Well, it's not, we, okay, that's not what you said. You both said two different things. Yeah. You said outside the budget, and, you, and he said inside the budget. Right. He's just asking for no. Okay, we're on to asking for You're no. saying outside the, the you, you said outside the budget, you said inside the budget. So yeah, we're talking about just. Can we just get the number though? Okay. Let's just get the number. Yeah, that's all hard. Okay. 55 and plus whatever. Okay. Yeah. Towards the just get the number. Yeah. Okay. And if you recall, Council, that was one of the advantages that we discussed was that with 55,000, there are certain affinity groups uh, that the Chamber has already ties to, including all the So I'm going to ask if there are no more comments, questions. I do have a comment. Okay. And it's back to my point that, that we cannot ignore that there is still money remaining in the budget. It's a significant <coughs> amount from 2012, which goes to 2013 and every other budgeting situation I've been exposed to. You can't ignore that, that 62-4. And in, in your deliberations, and you, you know, as we con contemplate what we're going to do with this, you have to take the 62-4 into account. So I'm, that being said, I'm okay, the unspent monies in the 2012 budget will accrue to the fund balance for 2013. That's right. And that's, you know, that's a simple, quick way to fix it. But I, I, I don't want. I, I think we're. I think the purpose today is not to address the issue. Uh, that we have just issue of unused funds because we, that's a discussion we should have a different type of date to discuss whether we want to roll the money over or we want to use the money for existing expenses that were incurred in marketing and advertising and marketing and promotion. Say that again, James, because that sounds... What I'm saying is I want to preserve the opportunity to have a discussion at a later date about that $62,400 to be able to use for expenses that were associated with, in 2012, with marketing, promotion, advertising. I think you get your chance of that on the 21st. Well, then, yeah, but I don't want the money. I don't want to make a decision today that the yeah. money's going to roll over 2013, and then we lose the opportunity to use it. No, for, uh, I'm just offering that up as something that could happen. Okay. I mean, uh, granted, we've got to spend it. Or, I'm sorry. You can't make the decision yeah. today. It's not on the agenda. Okay. All right. Okay. We're okay. So you need a number for the document. That's it. All I'm asking is that we got the fifty-five thousand dollars number. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking the chamber. What else were they going to use that position for that's already in their budget for 2013? What are the additional things that you want to do with that position? Prior to her coming up, Council on the left, that we're having. The information that was handed out, is this valid for the meeting that we're having today? It says August 14th. Is this part of the discussion? I believe it is. That's the, that's the budget that they submitted. In the very first page, it says 30% of it is for the management of that position. Is that how I read that first bullet point? Yeah. I mean, is it? Uh, that's, when, that's the way it reads. When, when um, we had this discussion before, it was for the management of the Tourism Bureau, mm -hmm. which in their budget does include the marketing person. But it was for, see how it has right under it, copier, rent, mm -hmm. so the other things too. That's what we were told. So to, so, so to decide if the person comes to the city, 
it would take all of their visitor bureau out of their operation. Correct or not? Is that how I understand that? That is correct. Mm -hmm. So we don't know. But yeah, the law does allow some functions. Okay. I mean, it does. Okay. Functions that, um, that where they may not be the visitors bureau, there are still some functions that the council could authorize them. They could budget for them. They could be still do. Could still okay. do out of the tourism budget, as I understand. One would have to ask whether the scale of the economies are more efficient. Uh, right. 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 And, and my other concern is that we've been talking for several years about branding and moving forward with the Visitor Bureau and, and that the network. So I feel like this puts us back if we're getting, even if we brought it here to the transition time. And I, I feel like we should already be, be at the point where we're branding and we're carrying out the mission. And it's like we're taking two steps back. So I'm, I'm disappointed in that aspect. I, I, I don't know what the consensus is of everyone, but. We will soon discover that. <laughs> good, good comments, yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask the uh, president. Cammy Jackson from the Chamber of Commerce to come forward. As well as uh, Chair, Sherry Lack, I guess. And yes, sir. You have yes. more guests, would you? Yes. Good evening. Good evening. We have, um, good evening, and thank you very much. Good discussion. Um, I just want to point out that I have a number of members of my board and my executive committee here and some chamber members. I have an immediate past chair here. So um, they are all here in support of um, the discussion that we're having here tonight. Now I can go right to the bottom line and give you the number that you asked for. Um, Grant has some things that he would like to say, and um, Sonali, who is also on my board, would like to speak on behalf of the DeSoto Hotel Association. Would you, give, would you give us the number first? That's yeah. Would you have all of the uh, chamber board members to stand? Like yeah, I would, and I can introduce them by name as well. This Belinda May is our immediate past chair. Murray Owen is um, on our executive committee. Kirk Crone is on our executive committee. Marjorie Kraft is on our board. Scott Fleming is on our board. Abe Williams is our current chair. Um, I have Benny Brown, who is newly elected to the board. Trisha Coleman, who is on our board. We also have Kathy Jones, who is on our board. James Andrew is on our board. Sonali Madhavidar is on our board. Um, Grant Galbert is our chair elect. And one of our past chairs, Linda Rhodes, is also here with us tonight. The gentleman by our chief of police. Thank you. Scott Fuller is a chamber member. He represents the DeSoto Hotel Association, but um, he is also a uh, supportive chamber member as well. Okay. Did I miss it? My staff member, Larissa, is here. And she is our tourism and marketing specialist for the next job. Flash Gordon. Where's Flash? Flash, I'm sorry, I missed Flash. Flash Gordon, a very supportive and longtime like time member number two is also here with us tonight. So um, in answer of your in answer of your question, you have in your packet that I handed out to you, you have a summary of the budget that was presented on August 4th. So um, looking at those numbers, the administration fee is the um, the administrative fee to manage the visitor center of the tourism bureau. Um, that sales and marketing person would have access to all other line items that fall below it, except for the um, branding line item, because that's specific to the brand that we're developing that we've been developing for the last year. So, um, in total, um, mine is a very small portion of the membership dues as well. So. $143,255 is what um, is accessible for that out of the $219,505. $143,255. I'm sorry. You said everything except the $10,000, right? Yes. So and that's not two oh nine. dollars And then also some of the best Southwest. Too, some of the best Southwest. And then also the administrative portion of it. Okay, so you took out the sixty. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the ten. And then six thousand two hundred fifty, which is in some other figure, isn't it? The membership is down the bottom. Yes. Okay, and it was six what? Six thousand two hundred fifty. I remember we discussed that. Okay, so what you and give me the figure again because I just wasn't following. One hundred forty-three thousand two hundred fifty-five. Okay, and so that 
that that that physician would have access to all those dollars, and they may not because some of that, like for instance, the printed materials, um, the printed advertising, some of that is um, may already be spoken for because we have a contract with Texas Monthly for the sports facility guide to you know to uh, advertise our sports um, venues. So that would not they would not have that have access to that amount of money. So. I, I would like, um, if you could do it quickly, uh, since um, Patricia, or Councilwoman Ledbetter, was not here uh, for some of your presentation uh, that Saturday when we had budget, um, I would like for you to go through this quickly. Okay. This presentation. Okay. Is that okay with you? Well, you know we're going to do that this presentation? No. Yeah. Well, this is the side of the budget. No, no, no. This is oh, our, 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 Is this a repeat of what you're going to do on the 21st? No. The 21st is our quarterly report and budget. And this is basically a um, support, for a support why document for why the position should, should be in the chamber. Okay. Which is pertinent to this meeting, isn't it? Okay. No, I thought you were trying to get to another objective. So no, no, no. Go ahead and proceed, and please, uh, as she has requested. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you for having us, and, and so we did bring that to kind of highlight it again because we knew that you were yeah. missing, mm -hmm. and so we wanted to kind of go over that again. And then also, we had to we wanted to write a couple things on the board. Is there a way that we could get this to come up? Um, so we thank you for having us, and. Um, I think the mayor brought up a, a really good point about uh, speaking loud and strong and things that's heard. And one thing that, that we kind of discussed at our board retreat is, is becoming stronger, louder, and being heard. Um, so you could expect that of the chamber for the next several years as well. Um, looking at supporting business, who's supporting business, and we want to support people who support business. So. We appreciate all of you and your support for the chamber and supporting business in the community. Uh, we kind of did a quick calculation. We know that school district is the largest employer, single employer, but we made a rough guesstimate of about 7,000 uh, employees under chamber membership. So that's a pretty loud voice. Um, so we look forward to kind of banding that together for the future and uh, growing our relationship and more of a partnership with you guys. So we appreciate that. Uh, what we wanted to do real quick is just go over the hot funds, how that whole process works, because we know we have some outside people here too. So we want to make sure that everybody understands where this money is coming from and the flow through that. So, Sonali, would you please? Okay. So um, just so that there's no misunderstanding of where the, the monies that are going to the chamber and the CDB function are coming from, if a guest checks into any DeSoto hotel, let's say their room rate is $100, there is a tax total tax rate of 13% that they pay. 6% of that tax goes to the state hotel occupancy tax of $6. 7% of it goes to the city of DeSoto hotel occupancy tax fund, that's $7. So all the hotel rooms and nights that are, that are accumulated throughout the year are what contribute to that fund. The only reservations that are tax exempt um, are never exempt from city tax unless they're a religious organization or they have some 501c3 designation. So almost every single reservation pays city tax. The only other exemption is if you stay in a hotel consecutively over 30 nights. You do, do not pay any tax at a city or state level. So we just wanted you to know where the money is coming from that we're talking about. Does anyone balance has to be used with the intention of putting heads in beds and promoting tourism to the city. That doesn't mean that it will always result in tourism, but it should have the intention of doing so. Okay, so um, if you take out your packets. Some of this is a repeat of what I talked about um, the other day, and some of it is just new information. So, when the chamber administers the CBB, we use less than 30% of the budget that we get from the hot fund for management, for a, for a management fee, for lack of something better to call it. Um, that helps us pay for the overhead 
for housing the visitors bill. So it helps pay for the rent, it helps pay for the utilities, it helps pay for the front desk person. Um, it helps pay for um, uh, just, just the space that we use for the rec, for our tourism rack, which is in, which, which is in our office. So um, we say $60,000, that amount has never increased. It's currently less than 30% um, of the budget that we get from city council. So the chamber functions as the visitor center. Beside, the, you can distinguish between a CVB and a, and a visitor center like this. The CVB, they are the ones who go out and bring in the people to your city. They are the tourism sales, they are the promotion arm. They go and they bring people in. The visitor center is what you have in your office that people come to to get, like the uh, brochures from Cowboy Stadium and the maps and the, and the things like that. So that so when I say visitor center, I'm talking about the chamber office itself where we house all, the, all those visitor guides and things like that. And then CVB would be this position where we sell the city of DeSoto, where we um, print uh, brochures to, to give out to people and where we do um, printed advertising and things like that. So as the visitor center, um, Lorinda, who is our front desk person, will take calls um, for people that are coming into DeSoto to visit. They may want a nap. They may um, want to know uh, where a good place to eat is. They may want to know um, what hotel to stay in or if we have any hotels. They um, also, if they are a group that's coming in, they may ask for goodie bags, which we provide to them. They, uh, they may have a family reunion coming in and staying in our hotels, and if they do, we provide goodie bags to them. Um, things like that. So, so we take a lot of phone requests. We also have people walk in every day asking for information about DeSoto, asking um, if we provide goodies uh, for family reunions. How, you know, how can they set up a meeting? Or, you know, is there meeting space available? So we have phone requests and we have walk-ins. Um, and then again, as a visitor center, we have the tourism marketing racks in our office. And, um, and we um, do VIP gifts as well for any big gifts big name conferences that come in or city council or, or you know the state representative is going to be here for whatever reason we'll give them gifts. So moving on to um, the next page, um, we believe that the Chamber of Commerce is the is the best provider of service to the end user. And the reason why we believe that is because the Chamber has the relationships with the business. So if we know a big group coming in, we can reach out to our business members and we can say we have a group of 100 people coming in, they want goodies, can you provide anything for our bag? So we have that relationship with the businesses. We also have relationships with both the regional and the state travel and tourism agencies, such as um, the Dallas CVB, Texas Tourism Industry Association, Texas Association of CV yeah, CVBs. Yeah. Um, we also have relationships with the advertising agencies and with those people who, um, who want to help us market the city of DeSoto. They call me almost daily. We have a product for you to look at. Um, we got your name from the Texas Association of CPB. We got your name from TIA. We want to reach out to you to see if we can partner with you to market the city of DeSoto. The Chamber has the relationships with the visitors. When, when visitors travel to a new city, they call the Chamber first. They call the Chamber and say, tell me about your city. What can you tell me about DeSoto? Whether they're coming to visit or if they're coming to live, they contact the Chamber of Commerce and they ask for various pieces of information, a relocation guide, anything that will help them um, learn more about the city that they're about to visit or about to go to. Um, easy access to the visitor center. You drive by on Hampton Road, we're right there. You pull into our parking lot, you park right in front of our door, you walk in, there's somebody always there, eight to five, Monday through Friday. Our doors are literally closed, so we have very, um, easy access to our visitors. The chamber staff has expertise in the, in the tourism field, and um, and that's not something that everybody can say. So not only are we experts in the hot fund and the statute laws, but we're also experts in the field of tourism. We've been we've been trained in um, travel and tourism. And then um, finally, once again, the visitors contact the chamber of commerce first when they want to learn more about our city. It was the chamber that first came to the city council to develop a brand for the city because we are the ones who are trying to market the city and um, it was difficult for us to um, 
um, come up with something to market. We could market our hotels, which is nice, but that's not what our job is. Our job is to market the city. So what is it that we have to offer? And that's why we came to you a year or so ago, and we said we need to develop a brand. We need everybody to be on the same page. We need to be able to market to Soto in a unified voice. And so we started that, um, that initiative. The Chamber has the volunteers to work on that initiative. We have over 7,000 em um, employees here that we represent, and we can tap into any one of those 7,000 employees. Granted, we're not gonna get all 7,000 of them, but we sure can tap into them. And um, we take, um, if, if we have a member that has 100 employees, any one of those 100 employees can work for the Chamber of Commerce. So we have a large volunteer pool to tap into. Um, the Chamber coordinated the meetings between the City Council and the Steering Committee and the, um, and the agency. And we were the ones who worked with the agency. We drove them around um, with Kathy's help, wherever she went. We drove them around the city and, and, and um, taught them about our city, showed them um, what the settlement was all about. And, um, and that's where we have the expertise, because we know the ins and the outs of the city of DeSoto. <coughs> our chamber staff, um, it, we're the ones who create the ads for the DFW kiosk. It's time consuming, it's not fun. It, but we are trained on it, and um, it's fun when we see the end product, but it's not necessarily fun getting there. But we are trained on it, so there's a there's a learning curve for um, for training for those uh, DFW kiosks. Um, we also, even as recently as an hour before I left here, we got a phone call from the kiosk. Somebody was stranded at the airport, and they didn't know what to do, and guess who they called? They called the Chamber of Commerce, and our staff was able to walk them through the process and get them to where they needed to be, because we are the experts in the city of DeSoto and in, in tourism marketing. Um, the next page I left in there, um, as far as professional development, because there was a question on what professional development meant and what sales conferences meant at the last meeting that we were at. So I wanted to make a little bit of a distinction. So um, instead of putting tourism related conferences, I added, I, I changed it to sales conferences. Uh, the tourism sales and marketing person that I proposed that the chamber hires, um, we'll go to um, visit with meeting planners, they'll go to visit with tournament planners, event planners, and sell the city of DeSoto, sell those planners on what we have to offer here. And what we have to offer here primarily is meeting space and nice hotels, 642 rooms that they can, that they can stay in. Um, professional development, again, we'll be um, sending that tourism sales and, and travel person if they're not already a certified travel um, travel exe tourism executive, um, which it may be somebody that has gone through the class with me, um, but if not, then we can send them to that class, and they can and they can um, also become a certified tourism executive. Um, and then um, there are a variety of different um, tourism-related conferences and things that they can go to because I believe I have a master's degree, but I don't think I should ever stop learning. And so that's why I go to these conferences and I went and became certified as a tourism executive because that's my job. And so to me, it's important that, um, you know, even uh, insurance agents and doctors and, you know, other people, they always go through continuing education. They have to get those CEU. So I think it's important um, in our world as well. And then, of course, the, the tourism related membership and dues fell under that, um, that category as well. So, um, in a minute, we're gonna, I'm going to have um, Sonali come up here and talk about um, some pros and cons, because that's what we were actually asked to do today, but I wanted to give you some background information. So, um, the CBB sales and marketing person, which um, we have, a, I have um, created a job description for that. Um, in my uh, humble opinion, that person should report to the chamber president, because that's where the expertise lies. Um, that person will be responsible for all tourism sales and marketing efforts under my direction. Um, they will conduct sales calls in person or by telephone. They will sell to area meeting tournament and event planners, as I um, said earlier. They'll solicit and book conventions, meetings, and trade show business by working with the meeting planners, um, with group conference planners, and with the DeSoto hotels. Um, they'll sell the existing product that we have, the hotels, the local attractions, the, the restaurants, and they'll utilize the branded uh, marketing pieces that I um, gave you last time as the lead behinds. Um, I think that um, it's important to note that um, this person will also utilize the passkey um, 
capacity system, which is our housing bureau. We already have trained staff on that, but this tourism person um, will assist with that process as they're selling the DeSoto um, hotels and meeting spaces to their conventions, and they'll work hand in hand with um, the one who's already trained on that system. So um, I'm just going to go through the uh, DeSoto Board of Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors and the DeSoto Hotel Association agree that the position should be housed within the Chamber of Common Commerce and the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Um, both entities, the DHA and the Chamber of Board of Directors, believe that it should not be transitioned to the city. Um, and I'm going to just go through some reasons why. Um, the first one is, and it's, it's what Patricia had alluded to earlier, um, there's been a number of years spent on Cami and her staff getting certified with certain certifications that would give them the ability to manage this person. Um, and so, for example, um, our chamber president is um, certified with a certified tourism ambassador designation, which is a year-long program. And then she's also certified with a certi certi certified tourism executive certification, which is a three-year program. Um, and then her staff has also been certified in a number of items. Um, she's also attended several various conferences and continuing education classes. Um, and so the DHA um, specifically feels that she has more knowledge right now than what lies within the city um, offices. Um, second of all, um, this, the Chamber of Commerce does have the established relationships with the various other CVBs around the Metroplex and in the state of Texas, and then also most importantly with the Dallas Convention and Visitors Bureau as well as the Fort Worth Convention and Visitors Bureau um, and the Arlington so it would be a whole new process for the city personnel to get involved in those relationships. Um, the hotels unanimously support this posi position being housed under the Chamber of Commerce um, because they have the Executive Tourism Committee that they sit apart on, and so Scott is serving on that, and there's already a very nice process that has been put in place over the course of this year that has been working very well in terms of um, executing tourism. Um, the main thing that the hotels are concerned about is just visitor recognition. Most people, when they call to inquire about a city and their amenities or hotels, are going to call the Chamber of Commerce. That's the first place they're going to call. So it's bad customer service to say, well, you need to call the city and this is who you would call. Um, it's adding an extra step in the process. Um, also, we implemented the pass key system, and that's a way for the hotels and the Chamber to track how where groups are staying when they come to the settle. Um, there's a number of dollars, how much was it? Oh, $1,500 oh, $1, was already spent um, on that software for the chamber, and then also there was some additional money spent on the training for that. Um, and so Lorinda has been working on that and will be hosting a training session for the hotels here very soon. And then um, it's just, we feel it's more efficient to keep it because as, again, as that council and uh, Ms. Ledbetter had, that it's taking steps backward. Um, I think the one thing that the Chamber of Commerce has done a really good job at is trying to get the tourism piece in place and, and worked on. And so I think the hotels feel that they have at least done a visible effort to try to get that, and it is moving in the right direction. And then the last thing that the hotel association was concerned about, if the position is housed within the city, there is a potential that the there might be a little bit confusion on monies that are spent. So for example, Kathy has some efforts that she works on. You know, we don't want this marketing person to meddle on that because that would be an illegal use of the funds. So we think for audit purposes, um, because there are some eyes on the city facility right now at the state level relating to the hot fund, we think it'll protect you guys um, from anybody auditing that position and then going really deep into what they're doing. Because if there's anything that they're doing, let's say, the Arts Commission puts on a local theater show. While that is, it's marketed maybe towards tourism, but it hasn't resulted in any movements in the past. No, just for the record, you're being recorded. Yeah, no, that's fine. You said the eyes of Texas are on. The Texas Hotel and Lodging Association, because of all the presentations that have been given to the city of DeSoto, you know, from. But what you said, what you almost inferred is that we are officially under investigation? No, 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 no. I'm just saying there's eyes but, right now in DeSoto. So we just, as, as DHA wants to prevent, 
we want to make sure that the fund is, is and, 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 and it we, is being funded. And everyone on this council does, <laughs> too, and every one in our, in our administration does. Right. Of course. I just don't want you to be uh, misinterpreted if you were saying that we are under investigation no, no, that's not or we are being audited. We, just want, we want to make sure in the case of an audit, we feel that this would be a, it's a clearer designation of the function to keep it within the CVP under the chamber. So let me, let me clarify what I said. We absolutely do not think um, the, you know, that's not how I meant that statement. What I meant was we just feel it's a good decision to keep it under the CVP, to keep a distinction of how this works. Yeah, and I just you know, don't want <laughs> for you to be misunderstood by this council because uh, let me be very clear, we're not under investigation. No. We're not being audited. Uh, no one at the state uh, level has notified the city that uh, in any way the city has been perceived to be using uh, the occupancy tax inappropriately. No, not at all. And the, the, the hotels all believe that the, the hot fund balance has been used completely accurately. And you are all on the board that yes. helps steer yes. where those funds are going to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I just, we're so, very transparent. Yeah. And thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, absolutely. So we just, that's just, um, does anyone have questions about any of those items related to why we feel that it should be housed there and not with it? I <coughs> My question is have you spoken with cities that have? Um, Visitors to CDBs operated by the city? Um, I believe Cami was actually doing a study um, on which cities have it. Such as Grapevine? Grapevine um, and Allen or something yeah, really. um, The difference that, at least that the hotels have seen, is they have uh, quite a few amenities that they offer. The cities are actually destinations, mm -hmm. and so, um, and all of their functions are managed by the city. So a lot of the sports facilities are managed by the city. A lot of the um, entertainment venues are managed by the city. And so for them, would you agree, it, co it, it makes more sense for those cities to house them that way, is what I believe. Right. In the, um, and I think I sent um, you a email, email and um, listed those um, entities that were managed by the chamber and those that were managed by the city. And um, in most cases, those that are managed by the chamber are cities that are a lot like ours. As Sonali mentioned, they don't have, um, they're not a destination city. And so um, their tourism department isn't huge, but they do a lot for the CBP. So kind of like we are, we're, we're very tiny, tiny, CDB, but we do a lot, and we do it through our volunteers a lot, a lot of times. So there are um, of the of the ones that I reached out to in the Texas Association of CBBs, which is my um, one of the one of the groups that I go to for uh, whenever I have a question that I can't answer. Um, most of the responses that came back to me were they were managed by the Chamber of Commerce, and they were a department of the Chamber. Um, and right along those lines, uh, that was part of my question, and I was going back to the legal use of hot funds uh, in those cities. There, there doesn't seem to be an issue about the legal use of hot funds or marketing direction. In the cities where the CBP falls under the city. Right. Just, I just wanted to, okay. Yeah, right. no, not, not to our knowledge. And All right. Again. Well, but, but, and also um, keep in mind that in those cities, they are, um, that person is a tourism director. They are not a marketing director. And, and, and the difference to me is that a tourism sales and marketing director actually physically goes and sells the city to put heads in beds. A marketing person is the person who facilitates the, uh, the brochures, the Facebook, the social media, and that, and that kind of thing. Now, in, in my world, because we wear many hats at the chamber, all of us wear at least two, if not three or four different hats, that tourism sales and marketing person could also do the social media, because you can do that from anywhere. You can do it from your phone while you're, you're flying, while you're flying <laughs> maybe. You have Wi-Fi. Um, but in, in the budget that I'm presenting, um, I have actually talked to 
a marketing, uh, a local marketing firm that will help us with that social media and we'll do our posts, I'll do posts, Lorinda can do posts, so there's more people with their hands on um, doing those marketing things. So, that, so that's the difference to me, that, that tourism salesperson I see actually going out and, and um, encouraging these meeting planners and these sports planners to come to our city because this is what we have to offer rather than just um, trying to market it internally because it's not as easy when you don't have a, uh, a destination for people to come to. You know, if this was uh, Arlington, we had Cowboy Stadium and, and, and whatever you call the Rangers, ballpark, ballpark at the um, it's a lot easier to do that without having to go out and do it, although they, they do that as well. This, the tourism person that I'm thinking of will actually go and build relationships with the, with the ballpark at Arlington and with Cowboy Stadium so that we can put packages together with our hotel. So that's another service that we can offer to these people. So, so that person, I think, plays a very um, important role more than just someone who does some internal uh, work. And we are also um, saying that when that person is hired, it's not a decision made just by the chamber and the CDB, that there would be a hiring committee put together that would include all stakeholders, so the city council person, a couple of the hotels, arts, arts, you know, the arts and history, historian, economic development. economic development, right. So maybe a panel, because this position would be very critical to the process of the overall branding of the city. How many, how many years has the chamber uh, been using hot funds to provide this uh, convention and visitor service? Is it? Well, it's, it's more than eight. I can tell you that because I've been here for eight years. Um, it's probably closer to, I'm going to say, at least 15. Um, so this is a long-term thing because I, I just don't recall it being a, much of an issue other than the last, say, two or three years. Well, and, and the reason for that, Sandy, is because in the last two or three years is when we've gotten all of our hotel money. For, you know, prior to this, we had um, three hotels that were um, uh, older products, so they weren't brand new products, and now we have four new, ho or three new hotels plus one that was newly remodeled. And so um, we have significantly increased the amount of um, sales tax dollars we get from the, ho from the hotels. Back to the matter of three years. Over well, the last three years, really, the, the money has become something more than trivial. Right. And, and, and it's a process. You know, when we, when we, when we first started getting a, a higher amount of money three years ago, um, we, had, we had some challenges because we, um, we didn't know, you know, that this, maybe this printed advertising piece was better than this printed advertising piece. And we had some challenges. Um, working with the hotels and, and getting everybody on the same page and but we've worked through that we have a good process in place now we have um, we have created an executive tourism committee that has all stakeholders that that get hot funds on the executive tourism committee so so everybody that has um, uh, a stake in those hot funds can can say you know yeah we've looked at the budget we think that this is a good use of the funds um, we like the fact that you're advertising here or um, we, we don't think that that's a good place for you to advertise why don't you look at this but there there's ten people that are on the on that executive committee that can look at it and say yay nay or, you know let, let's move forward so it, it, it's, a, it's a good process Well, I guess on the other side of the, the coin, the, uh, the city spends a lot of money apart from hot funds to promote the city. And, you know, that may be through the Economic Development Corporation, and each, you know, has a, a path or an angle that they're trying to promote, you know, be it uh, uh, through, uh, you know, our arts and, and entertainment programs here and all of that. And, you know, you're talking about promoting the city, but that with hot funds has to be primarily focused on bringing tourists or visitors to the city who perhaps are going to stay in our hotels. Right. And I think there may be some economies for the city if we began to integrate our approach. And, you know, I, we talk about this advertising person for $55,000, whatever that checks out to be. We'll use that as a talking fund going forward. But if we integrated this into the city, there's another sixty thousand dollars that we wouldn't pay for your facility use. That uh, you know that, that we would have 
were it part of the city because I think we can find, uh, I would presume we could find, uh, you know, office space or a way to house this function or person within the city and it would just be a part of the fixed cost of running the city. You know, we're not allocating space, we already are paying for the space. We're paying for your, you know, your space time and, and whatever else you do to provide this service. So, you know, there's, a, there's certain economies there that uh, appeal to me. And there's an opportunity to be more integrated in our approach that appeal to me. Uh, you know, whether this is better or worse, um, you know, than what we're doing now, uh, frankly, I don't know. You know, I don't know that much about advertising and, you know, bringing people and tourism. Uh, but I do know the dollars, and, you know, the dollars tell me, and the uh, uh, consolidation tells me that there's at least an opportunity. It may not be the best opportunity. And uh, the other thing that concerns me is the dollar issue is by the numbers you guys, and I say you guys, the chamber provides me, um, the, the budget management is business. I mean, you've got accounts where you're 97% uh, under budget. You can spend any money for, you know, for all practical purposes. You've got accounts where you're 120% over the budget. And we've gone through this for several years to the point that, um, and you, you have passed out documents that frankly don't even, the, the bottom lines don't even add up. You know, to, they're incorrect, bottom, pure and simple. And it leaves me with a lack of confidence about how the funds are being managed. It's just, you know, what you passed out leaves me with a lack of confidence. We went through this a year ago when there were surplus funds and things had been jockeyed between accounts and that was all supposed to be corrected. And I don't know whether we're jockeying between accounts now, but, um, you know, depending on whose number you want to believe by my numbers, which I derive from yours, you're going to end the year with something like $44,000 surplus or unspent budgeted funds that you've received. So, so let me, can I, so can I address that? Please. So, a budget is a very rough draft of what we think we're going to do in the coming year. Now, the budget is created, we start to create it sometime in April, and we work on it in May, and we work on it in June and sometime in July or August, we present it to city council. Now, during all that time, I've got people calling me up and saying, okay, I've got a new marketing plan for Texas Monthly, or I've got a new plan for whatever. And so we've got to look at all of that stuff. So city council looks at our budget as a whole, and we say, we think we're gonna spend $20,000 in printed advertising. So the uh, marketing plan for Texas Monthly, for Texas Highways, for Austin Monthly comes out, and we want to look at um, putting maybe one or two ads in, in those um, subscriptions throughout the year. And when you look at that, it comes out to $21,080. So because the money that we are allocated is for marketing and advertising, which is what we spend it on, sometimes the numbers in one account or another will fluctuate just a little bit because it is not an exact science. I have learned that in the eight years that I've been doing this. It cannot be an exact science. Now, if I knew that I had 10 members that paid me $1,000 each, that is an exact science. I know how much money I technically am going to get if each one of them renews. But when it comes to spending the money, and also halfway through the year, one or another of these entities can change their pricing or they can say, you know, hey, for an extra $50, I'm gonna give you a full page ad instead of a third page ad. Well, I'm gonna jump on that if I can do that for $50 instead of an extra $2,000. That's number one. Number two, when it comes to spending these dollars, there are some accounts that we did purposely spend more money in because we wanted to get the name of DeSoto out there. We had a prime opportunity to put money in the um, commemorative uh, Mavericks program when they won International World Championship, whatever they won. <laughs> I like it. I like it. We had an opportunity to put an ad there in there for nine hundred dollars. That is a shelf that has a shelf life of one year. I had already allocated all of the printed advertising dollars out. Well, do you think I'm going to pass up a chance to have the city of Minnesota's name in a? in a book that's going to sit on somebody's coffee table for a whole year? Probably not. 
That's number one. Number two, promotional items and printed marketing materials. Both of those items were not used because those items were set aside for when we created the brand. We haven't finished creating the brand yet. The very last meeting we had, the consensus was, not the vote, but the consensus was to move forward with one of the logos that we showed you, but you asked that the advertising agency come back and tell you what that's going to look like before we spend any more money allocating some money out. So I'm not going to spend money unwisely by saying, you know, we have $20,000 to spend in printed marketing materials and I have to spend it by September 30th. I'm just going to spend it on garbage because I got to spend it. I'm not going to do that. That to me would be not a fiduciary uh, way of, of doing things. That I'm would not be asking you to spend way. it on garbage, but, um, but, that, but you're asking <coughs> why, why we hadn't spent it and that's the reason why your Your philosophy spent it. would not work for our city manager. It would not work for our economic development corporation and, and from my standpoint it doesn't work for you you know when we have um, budget variances in these uh, areas you know generally sometime during the year you're coming back and saying we need to amend the budget and that's presented to council and you know we go over it and talk about the circumstance behind it and vote on it well and and you're right and, in, and, and we, this, would, we would yeah. have come to city council except for our next quarterly meeting isn't until next week because we couldn't get our schedules together. And so that is why that money hasn't been spent. Now, uh, we could have emailed you and said, we're not spending the money because we're not done with the brand, but you knew where we were on the brand initiative as well. So, well, and, and, and I'm not saying that we're perfect, and I'm not saying that we, that we don't make mistakes. And so, okay, perhaps we should have emailed you and said, we're not going to spend this money, but we didn't. Well, you, you know, you and have, you have a chance to present uh, every quarter. You know, you have a chance to make these presentations. And I'm not trying to argue with you line, you know, go through this and, and look at it line item by line item. But I am telling you that the variances that, that have occurred uh, in the past, you know, certainly the last two years, uh, do not give me a lot of confidence going <clears throat> forward. It almost seems like the chamber is being penalized or criticized for doing a good job of um, not spending money unwisely. I look at this, and to me, I look at it and say, uh, job well done in managing the budget, because you didn't waste money yes. that the federal government does sometimes. You said, okay, we don't need the money here. Why well, spend it when then we don't have a need here? Now, I agree with Sandy that you could have come back to us and said, let's reallocate it. That's, that's something you should have done. But in the big picture, I appreciate the fact that you did not waste money, the fact that you were prudent in managing the money. So I don't think you should be penalized or criticized, except we're not keeping us abreast of it. It's important that we remember, Council, that the number one employers in any city in America are small businesses. And the Chamber of Commerce is the number one advocate for the small businesses. These folks that we recognize around the room, many of them own small businesses in our city. And I think that as we look at this issue, we, we cannot afford to get uh, distracted and center our focus and lose focus on the fact that we're trying to decide whether CBB stays with the chamber or it goes under the city. Now I will say this, I'm looking for measurable results, the bottom line. At the last meeting we talked on Saturday and I asked about occupancy rates. If you recall, the report we were given was approximately or close to 80% occupancy rate. That's incredible, you know, for our city. And certainly, uh, the new hotel in Dallas has driven a lot more conventions to this area. Uh, and that's wonderful. Uh, and that's what hotel are saying. Whenever you build something like that, that's close in proximity, it's going to have some overflow of business. How do we measure this? Well. This chamber has asked about having a marketing person. We have also expressed a genuine interest in needing a marketing person. I guess the question that I have is, the marketing person we have as opposed to the marketing person they have, uh, I'm looking at the return on investment. 
And if this person is dedicated, as they've said, to event planners and, and uh, meeting planners, then that's going to put heads in beds. And as far as the legislators are concerned, uh, that's what that occupancy tax should be used for, uh, not for anything else. And so if we were, we're looking at a person paying 13% when they come to our city, uh, and the state has you know, they were genius in creating this because they understand uh, that 6% is coming back to them and they can attract more businesses, more folks to travel to Texas. We have to do the same thing. We're the capital of hotels in the best Southwest. We have seven hotels. We do approximately 600,000, or we had approximately 600,000 roughly in occupancy tax revenue generated. We far outpaced Cedar Hill at 200,000, and Duncanville at 300,000, and Lancaster at 70,000. So sometimes when this happens, uh, there can be an overreach, and let's take control of this now. And I, you know, I'm not saying that that I'm not open to the city managing, but I, I like I like betting on American small business. Uh, because I know that they are, they're working on uh, commission. You know, these uh, folks around this table, if they don't make it, nobody eats. Uh, and so uh, that's, that's where I am on, on this. Now, measure the results. If we're at 80% approximately, then I expect to see a material increase. And if they were to by some miracle get 100%, which then we'd be looking at $150,000 more in this occupancy tax revenue. And then, maybe then there's room for the city to have a marketing person along with the chamber uh, working together in collaboration. And you know, we, you know, I, I like what Councilman Respis said about the scale of economies. You know, we have to look at working uh, in collaboration with other agencies here. School district is here. And maybe, you know, we can have a person that we both share uh, for marketing because you and I both know that the number one question that any economic developer has is what are the school systems like? So just my two cents on it. Uh, there's a reason uh, our hotelers are generating more revenue. Uh, but it's not necessarily that we have, uh, this is a destination place. So, yet. yet. That's, that's right, yet. Uh, but, yeah, that's, that's where I am on this. So let's not uh, get distracted on what we're trying to decide here. Well, all right, help me piece together then the, uh, you know, we've got small business, school districts, and tourism. And this whole function is tourism. And you know that's what we're we're trying to do here: create a bureau that, that will drive people, or create a function that will you know bring as many people as possible in here. Mm -hmm. And you know if we're getting 80 percent occupancy rates on our hotels, there is a limit up there. You know, you know, 100 percent is unrealistic; it never happens right. anywhere on earth. I don't know what um, you know what you would consider maximum occupancy. But if we hit the maximum, Jesus high, might he might have yeah. a problem with that. Yeah, he he went to an inn that was occupied. That's right. <laughs> so. But he did find a place, <laughs> <laughs> even if it wasn't a major. Um, well, I, I, if I could jump yeah. in, I think I'm sorry, cutting you. Go ahead, jump on. <laughs> we've been back and forth, and with our philosophies, and and we talked about. Um, then we're around and around and, and, and as I look at this it's about it still gets back to the budget the budget submitted and whether or not we approve it and I think I started out talking about because it's enough discussion here to suggest let me say that first that we still have some concerns about where this position is housed and how it's managed and I think it deserves more conversation, a working session, just to deal with that. In the meantime, I have proposed in transition that we deduct some amounts from the budget, and one would be the position, 
the 55,000, and then, since I, I'm a big picture person, I keep telling y'all that, this, the 62-4, uh, I can't get away from that because it's, it's still there and remaining. Uh, and I commend the chamber on not spending it on the previous things, but it's there. Uh, and so, you know, we, we again, we go around, we're going around and around, and I have my philosophies too about, you know, I, I support business, period, small, large, all of that, and not underestimating or, or not necessarily underestimating, but I am not alleging that, uh, I'm suggesting that any small business or any big business for that matter uh, has contributed to my concern. My concern is clearly related to the efficient and effective operation and management of the Convention and Visitors Bureau. And until we feel comfortable, more comfortable about that, I think there is a way for us to, uh, to move forward with authorizing a budget from the hot fund. I have suggested that it be $102,103. Uh, and then if the council chooses to come back to increase that at a different time from the hot fund, the council can do that. And that 102-103, just to remind you, and, and we're going full circle here. Like I said, I have to take into account what's remaining in their budget from that from fiscal year 12. And I'm sorry I can't get off that, but I'm on it, and I'm going to stay there. And then the 55000 and that is to reserve the discussion about the position that the chamber is requesting. So I guess if I were to sum it up, it would be, I'm not in favor of including the position now until we talk about how we can um, get with the EDC and all of these stakeholders uh, and, and our city manager and staff talk about what a person in that position would do or may do more efficiently than housing it in the chamber. <coughs> it's a discussion we need to have. That discussion. Well, honorable council members, please keep in mind we did approve that 219 and we froze the 55,000. So that was one of our last meetings where we approved the 219 final five as a budget and we froze the actual pay for that uh, sales and market that what? position. We Fine, froze. froze. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, well, we stated that we approved the budget as presented yeah. and we wanted to to take out that fifty five thousand. That was our last position. Well, my recollection was that we did the two nineteen and we did talk about the fifty five quite a bit, but there was a question about what that would really have to be, you know, if you went out to hire somebody, maybe it'd be, you know, fifty and I think perhaps it was Toronto that brought this up. You know, it might have to be more, it have, might have to be less. You know, we don't have a clue what the market is for such a person as that. But the 219 was the, you know, that was the number we, we set aside for this fund. We don't have a motion approving 219. Unless I said we, last name we, we approved a budget of 219. A budget which and contained the 219. We didn't say who was going to get the money. Yeah, we didn't say how it was going to be divided. Or we didn't approve a dollar amount. Not but officially. we were still discussing. No, it was a consensus. It was a proposed budget. It was not officially yeah. adopted at any of the meetings. And, and, and I think we left that meeting with concerns, and that's why we're still here. I, I have a question, because uh, I, I, I understand your point, uh, Councilwoman McCowan. And um, I just want to focus in on one, one part of it so I can continue with my thought pattern. Um, because you said that we needed to have another work session to discuss the actual position. And I really would, would like for us to be able to do that now. But I think you went on to say that we have additional information that we need um, in reference to what that position was look, would look like if it were housed under the city. Is that what you're saying? I think we need additional information. Like a position description, uh, you know, if it were housed under the city, 
And, and how what differently than what we have under the Convention of Disrespect. And I think the the that's a consideration. Mm -hmm. And if it were housed under the city, I think you bring the other stakeholders to the table. Mm -hmm. We talked about that in the last week. Yes. Well, I, I'll because cover that portion because I was the one that said that uh, our HR director could provide us with mm -hmm. a marketing description because we have a new glove system that we actually paid into. So getting a job description would be very challenging. That would be something that's mm -hmm. readily available for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I said, uh, the reason I'm asking is because I, I thought this was the meeting to discuss that and that we would be done with that part of the discussion. And I thought we would too, but, but, it, you know, but we just don't have enough information. Well, it, it is on the agenda. Okay. And uh, I'm going to dare to take uh, a consensus. As, well, I'm going to dare to see if that can be a motion. Can we have more discussion? Certainly. Certainly. Can we look back? on the history of the Chamber of Commerce and their activities as the in charge of tourism. I've been in this town for 22 years. I never heard anybody complain about the job they've done. Nobody's ever been supported. The Chamber has done a terrible job in handling tourism. And that's a lot. We gave the Chamber the task of Brand new. They were successful in coming back to managing to bring to us a logo, a brand that we liked. I think they have a good history of managing projects in a tourism. Maybe some other projects we're not happy with, but in a project of tourism, they've done a good job. And I don't see why we want to take something away from them when they have a history of doing a successful job of managing tourism dollars. And my suggestion was not to take it away. It was to address the budget for the Chamber of Commerce working as conventions and visitors bureaus. But it would allow, I mean, obviously, obviously the council, uh, this, this appears to be a discussion we should have when we're talking about having a marketing person for the city, and at the um, at our retreat, and since the retreat, we talked about having a marketing person here at the city. And I just uh, and, and my whole issue is how do we uh, address that without looking at how looking at leveraging our tax our dollars, our dollars whether it's from hot funds or taxes in general, that, and, and, and maybe I'm the only one half struggling with that, but in order to even move forward, and, and I know that's not on the agenda, but, but, but the budget is, and it's hard to talk about one thing, uh, which is the, the, the Chinese budget as the Convention and Visitors Bureau. That is what's on here for approval, and I'm looking at all of that and what we might do to move that forward, but at the same time, continue the discussion on whether or not we want a marketing person here at the city. Well, then, you know, and whether it's marketing and tourism, what yeah. is, you know, the city has to, we as a council have to decide what we really want. Right. We want a, a marketing person for the city with an internal, promotion of the city, because that's different than a director of tourism. So what do we want is, is what we have to decide. Because of the, and maybe that, as the mayor said, there may be two separate positions. One funded to buy tourism dollars for the purposes of promoting heads and beds. And one funded by the city for the purpose of promoting internally the city the Arts Commission, and other events the city does, and then work in conjunction with each other to help promote the city externally. Well, I've listened for a while, I do have a head, um, not because of the meeting. The, when we first started talking about, this, this marketing position came 
an issue or they came to something that was addressed to city council at several retreats now, almost two years. Part of that was because I um, went to a couple cities that were very similar in size to ours and they want to become more, uh, they want to become less dependent upon their, their residential property tax base. And we were looking at ways to try to uh, eliminate some of that and shift that, that position. And I brought to you all attention a couple of cities and we looked at their information. We found a place in Arizona that had uh, cotton fields and went from cotton fields to a multi-million dollar facility uh, that contributed to the tax base in a significant way and paid for itself. <laughs> Um, and we saw that we had that as an option. So we realized what was really missing. Had interviews and, and conversations with these individuals, two individuals in particular, uh, long distance and local, who were there in their presence. And shared the piece that was missing was the marketing person. The marketing personnel who had um, connections and relationships with various uh, public outlets that we actually do not, we do not have here. It's not that we aren't doing great things. No one knows that we're doing great things. And we wanted to be able to share that. And a, a marketing professional would be able to be that arm to do that. That's how this whole discussion of a marketing person really started to be uh, become much more prevalent for us. Now, where we are today is we have, we saw that because the marketing <coughs> professional was different than a public information officer, which is different than the, 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 the function that the chamber itself um, operates, we decided, well, you know, we really do need the marketing person. And that marketing entity that is so specialized would be able to service more than one, it would overlap into many different other, many different other entities right here within our, our, our city. With that being the case, we're here today. What has been proposed to us is a dual position, and they are very, very different. The tourism stuff is, is tourism. I'm interested in a marketing person. I'll tell you that up front. The tourism piece, uh, you have a person who, who said who we paid money to go to school and be educated and bring us uh, eight years worth of experience and relationships and should know.